Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope everybody has had an awesome week and I hope you're all looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Welcome Janil. Hi Bakrat. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Good to see everybody. Uh, students, this is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch, to become a member of our channel. Click the join button next to the subscribe button. This is an IELTS task one band nine bar chart writing class. And this bar chart is going to be on divorce rates. It's kind of a classic uh, bar chart that seems to come uh, back to IELTS every now and then. Many of you may have seen something like this at some point in your studies. And again, this is a members chat class. All right, welcome Cass. Hi, Laura. Hi, Faraz. Good to see more of you in here. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp. Uh, dot com on both of those uh, websites we've got lots and lots of uh, useful materials for you this is our academic IELTS website here click this big red button to join our premium package um, we are uh, an official British Council test registration partner and certified British Council agents you're in great hands with us uh, for general IELTS it's right here red button one-time payment lifetime access and um, there is a discount code for you it's better nouns uh, 25 so um, make sure that um, you click better nouns uh, 25 to get uh, that 25 percent discount of course, you can get our apps on our app stores and uh, Instagram. Follow us there. Join and start learning for success. Uh, again, we have this task one right now. This is our schedule for the remainder of the week. We have speaking part one after this class in about 90 minutes. That will be an all chat class so everybody can join in on the chat and I will be calling students and then we've got part two and part three on Saturday. Um, if you have questions, right over there, um, where you hear it chiming, uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly answer your inquiries. Okay, great. So um, today we're looking at a bar graph, everybody. And uh, bar graphs are a unique type of graph. You kind of uh, see it here. Okay, uh, let me switch my view so we can look at this a little bit more. So yeah, you see the, you see the bar graph here. Uh, and uh, that's just kind of a, you know, very basic bar graph, uh, but what's important here, students, is that you remember that bar graphs are used uh, to show uh, comparisons and contrasts between nominal data. Now, uh, the word nominal, let me move this over here. So the word nominal here, nominal data uh, means name data okay so this is unique to bar graphs uh, here we have the names Canada USA Finland now this isn't our bar graph yet I'm just using this to show you this is from our course so you're comparing this name data on interval scales okay interval scales uh, that's where you have uh, equal distant measures and that's on the y-axis here Okay, so here we have uh, tons of fish caught in 2005, 0, 50, 100. So we're basically comparing this nominal data on this interval scale. And that's the idea uh, of a bar graph or a bar chart application. 
And then here you have just some vocabulary to kind of start you on your path for writing. Uh, so again, you're comparing and contrasting. Uh, so we have the words taller and shorter. That's when we're uh, comparing bars like taller and shorter. Uh, higher here or lower here, okay. Um, remember your subordinating conjunctions, uh, different, however, opposite to, similar, uh, close to, okay. So keep those in mind as we work through today's uh, example. All right. So um, the structure for writing task one, okay, uh, writing task one uh, is a minimum of 150 words that you write in um, 20 minutes. So you've got 150 words minimum. Uh, keep in mind, students, that when you're writing for a band nine or even for a band eight, um, instead of the 150 words, you should be kind of going more for around 200, uh, maybe even 220 words, okay? It's very, very difficult, if not impossible. We've talked to uh, several IELTS examiners and they all agree that it's virtually impossible to get a band nine if you're only writing the absolute minimum uh, word requirement, okay? Minimum word requirements, if they're written very, very well, usually end up scoring about a band 7, 7.5, okay? So if you want to get a band 9, you have to keep in mind um, that there are four uh, parts to task 1. There's the introduction, okay, where we paraphrase the question, add more details from the graph. There's the overview, where we describe uh, the main features in the data. Then we analyze, that's the main part, that's about eight sentences. Um, and then we analyze the information provided step by step from most to least important. Okay, welcome back Amu to our group of members. And then for band nine, it's a good idea to um, include a summary. So students sometimes say, oh, my teacher said it doesn't need a summary. Yeah, but if you're going for a band eight or a band nine, it's probably a good idea to have a summary uh, with your uh, writing. Okay, all right, so let's begin writing, everyone. Uh, let me just um, switch over here to our syllabus. There we go, all right. And um, let me get that out of the way. Okay, here we go, everyone. So. Okay, uh, so again, uh, for uh, those of you who want to get access to our premium package, uh, make sure um, that uh, you are um, using this discount code. Uh, we've got Better Nouns uh, 25 for a 25% discount at aehelp.com, gltshelp.com. Okay, um, and again, if you have questions about our website or the IELTS, send, us an, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Um, okay, so um, here's our graph for the day, everybody. Ooh, quick flash there. Um, the first step is just read the question really, really carefully, so let's do that now. Okay, hi, Prabhasha. Um, all right, and so here we go. Let's do this. IELTS task one writing. The following chart gives information on divorce rates in two European countries. Okay, what are those two countries? Oh, okay, I see that uh, the two countries are Denmark and Norway. Okay, these are just made up um, kinds of uh, data, not necessarily true, although sometimes they might be. Okay, um, and then uh, Let's see what it says here. Report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So a pretty basic question, all right? So for the first part, remember, it's the introduction, okay? And for the introduction, we want to uh, start by 
just paraphrasing the question so we can actually do that here. So intro, uh, paraphrase the question and give more details. So let's do that now. And as everybody can kind of see on my screen here, I'm looking at all of our members and what you're chatting. So I'm looking for your writing here, uh, members. So please uh, paraphrase this question and give some more details using the graph. Let me show you the graph again. So here we have divorce rates in Norway and Denmark. Okay, Denmark, according to the legend, is denoted by the blue uh, bars. And then we have, of course, Norway denoted by the red bars. On our Y axis here, off to the left, uh, we have the percent rates from zero all the way up to 60. And then on our X axis on the bottom here, going horizontally, we have the years 2001, year by year, uh, going all the way to 2015. Okay, so that's what we have here. All right, so use that information. That's what you should be looking at first to help you with the introduction. Um, Cass, I saw that you wrote a piece of information and then you took it out maybe to edit a little bit. Let's see, Laura has a piece of information here for us to start us off. Let's see what you have, Laura. Okay. All right. Um, so this is Laura here. Laura writes, uh, the visual representation presents the annulment rate in Norway and Denmark between 2011 and 2015. Okay, um, Laura, it's kind of, I mean, you're paraphrasing, but it's very uh, kind of just a, a repeat of the uh, question and you're not giving more details. So what kind of a visual uh, representation are you talking about? Um, marriage annulment uh, maybe would be a little bit more accurate here. Uh, yeah, okay, you, you gave the years, which is good. All right, this is about a band seven uh, so far, Laura. I'm not really a big fan of just saying the visual representation. That's not very detailed, right? Let's see if we can get a little bit more detail there. So this is uh, Calvin here. Okay, Calvin writes, The uh, bar graph depicts the percentages of divorcement status in two European countries, namely Denmark and Norway, ranging between zero and 60% over the course of five years from 2011 to 2015. Okay, that's, that's a bit better. So that's definitely closer to a band nine. Okay, so here we're being specific, the bar graph, which is very good, all right. Um, depicts shows yeah the percentages of uh divorcement we don't need status and so we can take that out it's a bit wordy in two european countries namely denmark and norway okay uh ranging between zero and sixty percent good uh, uh, over the course of five years from 2011 to 2015 Calvin very nice use of the commas uh, by the way so uh, you're using the commas really well to show the uh, show the descriptive clause that you're adding so commas are used when you basically uh, describe the previous element in more detail so here, basically, Calvin says it's European countries, comma, those European countries are Denmark and Norway. And then here again, we have a comma because Calvin's saying that the divorcement or the percentage of divorcement is ranging between zero 
and 60%, and then another comma to close that uh, descriptive clause. Over the course of five years, another comma, followed by another descriptive clause, 2015, or sorry, 2011 to 2015. So that's great use of commas and it's very accurate punctuation. And for a band nine, you need to have accurate punctuation like that. So good job, Calvin. All right, that's fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, again, uh, this uh, first one, Laura, it would be closer to a band seven-ish um, and uh, Calvin, you would definitely be closer to a band nine. Let me just, um, uh, okay. All right, so this would be kind of a band uh, seven. This would be more of a band nine, just so you kind of get an idea of the difference when you read these two, okay? All right, I'll write the introduction and then we'll move on to the overview. So you're getting the right idea here and Cass, Prabhasha, Manthan, you're on the right track, okay? All right, so this bar chart um, illustrates, or you could even say compares the rate of divorce in uh, two European countries. I don't even use namely, I just say Denmark and Norway because the comma already says namely, okay? Denmark and Norway um, ranging from uh, zero to sixty percent between the years uh, 2011 to 2015. So don't overcomplicate the uh, introduction. Okay, that's good enough there. And now we are good to go for the overview. Okay. Let's take a look at what that is. All right, so the overview, I'm gonna stick all of this down here now. We're getting going. Yeah, we don't need a comma there. Um, all right, so we've got our uh, bar here and um, when we look at the main features, what do we notice here right away, members? And so again, uh, when we're looking at uh, the main features, we're looking for what is very evident or very clear uh, right away. Okay, so there should be a couple of interesting points uh, that are clear right away. What do you think, Manthan? What's going on here? What's going on in this graph? I mean, what can we see right away? I'll try to give you a, a little bit of hints here. So Jyoti says the total number of divorce cases in Norway is higher than Denmark. We don't know that because for that, Jyoti, we have to understand the population numbers. So we don't actually know the total number. We only have the percentage or the proportion. So be careful. That would be considered inaccurate information. All right. We don't know total numbers. So what I would do here is I would kind of do a slice here and do a slice here. I think there's some interesting information there. Okay, uh, Jainil says Norway has a higher percentage except for 2015. So we've got these slices here, right? And I definitely agree that uh, that's where we can see kind of the overview or the main feature for this um, graph. So yeah, it's true. It's interesting that Norway has higher percentage of divorce for almost all five of these years, except for the final year, 2015. Um, but again, we also see another interesting main feature here. Okay. And hopefully many of you have caught this, right? That the divorce rates in these two countries are between 30 and 50 percent. 
Does everybody see that? Interestingly, none of these years are down here in the 20% uh, range, and none of them actually exceed the 50% range. So all of these years tend to somehow um, kind of be in this uh, range of um, divorce rates, okay? Janil says, oh, I got it. In fact, if we wanted to be even more accurate, the lowest one is around 34%. So it's even a smaller range. Cass says, indeed. Okay, so let's write that. So let's write that overview. I'm going to write it, you write it, and then we'll compare, okay? All right, um, this is what uh, June has written. Hi, June, I hope all is well with you over in Alberta. Or perhaps you're in China now, I'm not sure. Okay, all right, so let's see. This is what June has given as the overview. Let me give you some feedback on this, June. Okay, so June writes, um, overall, uh, over the course of five years, um, try to avoid this kind of writing, June, where you have overall over, okay? Um, so instead of over, I would write during. Just because it's awkward for the reader, if at the highest level, like at the band nine level of writing, you have to um, pay attention even to the flow of the information. So overall, during the course of five years, uh, the changes in divorce rates in both countries, you've got a redundant word there, um, were relatively small despite some fluctuations. Mm, are they small though, June? I mean, there's, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I guess you could make that argument. They're only about four or five percent difference. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, I can see that, June. Yeah, I think that's a good argument. Um, we're relatively small despite some fluctuations. Furthermore, Norway has higher percentage of divorced couples than Denmark in most of the years except 2015. Very nice. So I would say that um, this is uh, roughly a band eight. Okay, as is. So you've got some good ideas there. Um, a couple of slight awkward mistakes, the both two um, and uh, the overall over, but otherwise it's not bad. Okay, all right. Let's see what Kofum has added to this overview. Okay, Kofum writes, uh, overall Norway has the higher divorce rate. Um, it's not unique here, so we're gonna take out this unnecessary article. Overall, Norway has higher divorce rates, it's plural here, uh, than Denmark over that period. Um, I would say in this half decade. Except 2015, the figure for both countries fluctuated uh, from 30 to 60 percent. Um, I don't think, uh, Co, that's accurate because the figure is fluctuating, <coughs> excuse me, uh, between 30 and 50 percent. Okay. So the, the percentage would be more accurate here. Uh, for both countries fluctuated between 30 uh, and would be a little bit better here and 50%, okay? All right, so a few mistakes there to make it clear, a little bit of word replacement, some awkward English, um, your examiner at this point for this piece of writing is probably thinking about a band uh, 6.5, okay? 
So that's the difference, and you can see that's the difference between a band eight versus a band uh, 6.5. Just the, the volume of uh, and the accuracy of the overview as well as the mistakes here. Okay, you're very welcome, Ko. I'm happy to help. I'm glad that you're in there. Okay. Uh, Krizzle, welcome to the chat. Get in there, get some sentences going. Okay, um, let's take one more. Okay, so let's take Andika. Andika writes the following for the overview. Denmark had lower rates of divorcement than Norway for four years. Um, uh, are they for all four years though lower? Yeah, I guess so. This last one's pretty close. Okay, it's a good observation. All right. Um, so Denmark had lower rates of divorcement than Norway for four years, uh, but the number slightly increased. Um, so when, where, this is a bit unclear, okay? Um, I think what you're trying to say here is that in the final year, okay? So Denmark had lower rates of divorcement than Norway for four years, but the number slightly increased uh, relative to uh, Norway in 2015. So you have to finish this sentence, Andika, for it to make sense to your reader, okay? On the other hand, the divorce number in Norway was falling, okay? Um, there's an increase here and then there's a decrease here. So it's after 2015, okay? Uh, so you have to have a bit more clarity here, okay? On the other hand, the divorce rate, it's not a number, um, the divorce rate in Norway um, fell uh, progressively after uh, 2011, okay? So again, you need more clarity here. Okay, so according to the IELTS examiner, Andika, because of the number of mistakes and because of the confusing information, this would be closer to a band 5.5 so far. Okay, and you have to be careful because if the rest of the essay continues to be unclear for the reader, then the score is going to keep going down um, to like a band five. Okay, so uh, be really careful about it, all right? So um, let's talk about this uh, overview a little bit. Let me write a sentence as well. Uh, at first glance, okay, because that's all I'm doing here. At first glance or immediately or an initial inspection, okay? I noticed that the divorce rates in both countries fluctuate between 30 and 50%. So at first glance, uh, the divorce rates in both uh, countries uh, fluctuate uh, between 30 and 50% uh, over the course of this half uh, decade. Half decade meaning five years. Uh, in addition, okay, because I'm adding this information, I can see that divorce rates in Norway were higher in each year except for 2015. So in addition, marriage annulment uh, rates were slightly, or maybe not slightly, I'm gonna leave that for my deeper analysis, were higher in Norway than Denmark. Uh, for the first uh, four years, but the inverse is true for 2015, okay? Inverse meaning the opposite, all right? So pay attention to some of this vocabulary like inverse, 
All right, so we've got a little bit of an inverse here. Inverse is when the tables turn. Now, I don't really recommend using that idiom in task one, tables turn, but the word inverse is good. All right, students, we're on to the big part. We're on to uh, the uh, analysis. Saab, keep writing and I'll take uh, some of your writing next, okay? And I see your writing there, Saab. It is clear that Norway had the higher divorce rate than Denmark in the given years except 2015. However, both countries witnessed fluctuations in percentage of divorce rates in the given time frame. It's not a however, Saab. It's not, uh, it's not opposite. Okay, That's a added piece of information. It's not an opposite piece of information. So be careful there. Okay. All right. Uh, Bakrad is asking, should we include percentages, numbers, and years in the overview for band nine? Um, you don't want to include specific percentages, Bharat, but it's a good idea to include kind of the range here between 50, 30 and 50 percent. Okay. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Now, um, for the overview here, we want to identify about eh, maybe five points of interest. Okay. So keep that in mind, not the overview, the analysis. Right? Or analyses. So for the analyses, you want to identify about five points of interest, okay? What are they? Um, and this can be different. Different students might think different points interesting. I would probably go year by year here. So we have, you know, a kind of a chronological set here. So I would go, you know, 2011. So check out beside me here what I'm doing. Um, 2012, 2013, 14, 15. So I might go kind of in that order. All right. Um, and uh, here, um, 2011, especially because this is quite a simple graph. So I can look at each of these years and write a sentence to compare, okay? Um, so this one here, I probably wouldn't spend too much time on it. Um, we've got the first year that's given. Uh, Norway is about 5% yeah, greater than uh, Denmark. And then here, uh, in the next year, 2012, this is an interesting year because Denmark uh, the divorce rates slightly decrease while in Norway they increase and that creates the largest gap of any year and it's also uh, the most so not only the most significant difference but also the highest rate of divorce of all these years in Norway so this is a very interesting uh, kind of element here number two and then number three, um, the gap kind of changes as Norway starts to decrease and uh, Denmark starts to increase in divorce rates, right? And that trend seems to continue into 2015, at which point um, there is a change uh, between um, the proportion of uh, divorce rates between Denmark and Norway, right? So we've got that continued decrease, okay? So hopefully everybody's looking at that and that's what we want to describe. So this would be my point one. This would be my point two. This is where a lot of interesting uh, events happen. And then this would be my point three, uh, four, five. Um, and again, five is kind of interesting because we have that that inverse of proportions, okay? So even though this is a fairly simple graph, we do have some interesting features going on here where Denmark follows this pattern and uh, Norway follows this pattern. So it's a, quite a different pattern um, if we draw some lines. So let me show you that again. So if I draw lines, and this is kind of a good strategy for bar graphs, is you take the top points of uh, each of the bars and you kind of do this connect the dots with it, right? 
and then you actually get the line graph style pattern. Okay, now make sure you don't change to writing about a line graph, but it's good to kind of see that pattern. Okay. All right, so uh, hopefully everybody's on board now um, and we can start with this number one here. So give me a sentence that describes this uh, first data point um, or first point of comparison in 2011. I shouldn't say data point, it's more accurate to say first point of comparison. And remember students, don't just think percentages but think proportions. Okay, so think proportions, okay? All right, I'm going to do the same. I'm gonna write and then we'll compare, okay, 2011. So, um, with further analysis in 2011, Divorce rates in Denmark are just over a third of marriages, while Norway is roughly 5% uh, more. That's it, that's all I'm gonna write for that one, okay? So here, with further analysis, uh, divorce rates are uh, just over one in three marriages um, because a third would be 33% and this is about 37%. So it's a little bit over one in three marriages, right? And then um, the divorce rates in Norway are about 5% more, okay? All right. Okay, Cass writes this for the overview. Okay, Cass writes, um, as you can see, uh, Norway's divorce rate was about 45% in 2011, being higher than Denmark's rate by approximately 38%. Cass, that's really confusing information. So you have to make a few corrections here, um, both to your writing and the information. So first of all, um, don't use second person voice, okay? So do not use second person voice. So don't, uh, in an academic essay like this, especially expository essay, you wouldn't say, as you can see. What do you mean I can see? I can't see the graph. I'm just looking at your essay. So, um, as can be seen is the better. You have to use the uh, passive voice there, Cass. So, as can be seen, Norway's divorce rate was about 45% uh, in 2011, being slightly let's use a qualifying word there, higher than Denmark's rate, um, by approximately 38, that would mean that it's 38% more. So you have to be really careful here with your prepositions, Cass. So higher than Denmark's rate um, by approximately 5%, okay? Not 38%, so be very careful. Uh, this would be moving you towards a band five, okay? because it's confusing. As, as soon as there is a lot of confusion in your writing, your band score tends to plummet more than the divorce rates in Norway, unfortunately. Okay, so be careful with that. Okay, uh, keep writing students because I am looking at what you're doing. Okay, uh, Bharat uh, writes, At first glance, percentages of couples uh, divorced in Denmark was 37% in 2011. You need the time frame there, Bharat. But inclination of 5%, but 
5% more inclination of his awkward English in Norway um, in the same year. Okay, um, that would be about a band five as well, Barad. Band five, 5.5, 5. so be careful. All right. Okay, students, so I'm moving on to point two. I'm picking up a bit of speed now because, uh, well, we've got a lot of writing ahead of us and not a lot of time. So um, this is uh, point two here. Okay, uh, this is where we have a lot of interesting events happening because Norway's rate of divorce has increased to almost 50%. Okay, and um, Denmark has experienced a bit of a decrease in comparison to the previous year, creating the largest gap of, well, 33 compared to uh, 49-ish. So we've got like over a difference of over 15% roughly. Okay, and this one here, all right. So let's write that. All right, so, oh, let me get rid of the tracking. Uh, in 2015, Norway's uh, divorce rate or divorcement um, is the greatest rate of divorcement is the greatest of any given year reaching nearly one in every two couples okay because it's almost 50 percent right um, simultaneously uh, divorce rates in Denmark decrease creating the largest uh, gap around 15% uh, between the two countries. Okay, now when I write a complex sentence like that, I want to review it to make sure that it makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, I have to think about splitting it into two sentences. Okay, and simplifying it so I can express the same information in a simpler way, maybe using a couple of sentences, but it has to make sense. If it's confusing, that's the worst, okay? So losing coherence in your writing or in your speaking, that's what you really want to avoid. Okay, so in 2015, Norway's rate of divorcement is the greatest of any given year reaching nearly one in every two couples. Simultaneously, divorce rates in Denmark decrease, creating the largest gap around 15% between the two countries. Okay, that I think that's fine. That's good writing, so I'll take it. All right. All right. Um, Sub, um, I don't think, so I think you're writing about Denmark there, be careful, okay, not Norway, otherwise it's a good sentence. All right, Rashika says, in 2011, the proportion of divorced rates was one third, not divorced rates, Rashika, just divorce rates, was one third, Denmark was 42% of separated couples, the gap of divorces between the two countries was 5%. Um, I think that's too much detail at the end, Rashika. If you actually write the percent, like if you say it was 38% in one country, 
42% in the other country, the reader can do the simple math and they know that it's 5%. So you don't have to uh, write another sentence for that. Make sure you maximize your use of time, students. Don't write unnecessary sentences. Baljeet says, why is there a broken heart? Because we're writing about divorce rates, <laughs> Baljeet. It's a good question. Thanks for making me laugh. So Baljeet's asking about the thumbnail. Why does it have a broken heart on it? Uh, because this graph in today's uh, class is about divorce rates in Norway and Denmark, hence the broken heart uh, kind of image, okay? All right. Okay, um, so I have that now, and now I'm going to uh, discuss kind of this changing trend here over the next two years, okay? So this changing trend of uh, decrease for uh, Norway, and um, so decrease for Norway in these two years, um, and then the increase uh, for Denmark, okay? And that makes sense because I just wrote about the gap, right? So here we go, right? I, I talked about uh, creating this big gap, the largest gap around 15% between the two countries. So here I can go, nevertheless, over the course of the uh, consecutive two years, uh, 2000 if I want to be even more specific I could write this it might not be completely necessary but 2013 and 2014 uh, divorce percentages or the percentages of divorce of divorce in uh, Denmark increase while in Norway they decrease making the gap smaller okay finally by 2015 Denmark or divorce rates in Denmark uh, surpass those of Norway by so I'm going on to my final point here uh, by about 4%. 4%. At which time, um, roughly, let's see here, 37% uh, of couples separate in Norway and over 41% file for divorce in Denmark. Uh, roughly 38% uh, of couples separate in Norway and about 42%, uh, let's say, these percentages don't have to be exact, so if you're off by 1%, it's not a big deal. In this case, you're just kind of estimating, um, and roughly about 42% of um, couples uh, file for divorce in uh, Denmark. Okay. So I uh, just want to check my writing here and make sure I'm not being too redundant, too repetitive. It makes sense, all right? So nevertheless, over the course of the consecutive two years, 2013 and 2014, percentages of divorce in Denmark increase, while in Norway they decrease, making the gap smaller. Finally, by 2015, Divorce rates in Denmark surpass those. Notice that word, surpass. 
being used here of Norway by 4%, at which time roughly 38% of couples separate in Norway and about 42% of couples file for divorce in Denmark. Okay, good. So uh, I kind of ran ahead there. Um, we're starting to be a little bit short on time and I want to get to the end of this essay. So what do we notice? In summary, what do we notice according to this graph? Okay, so I definitely learned something interesting about these two countries and the rate of divorce within this time frame. Um, what can we summarize about it? Give me a summary. I'm going to do the same. And all I'm doing here is really just looking at the main trend that I've learned uh, from looking at this bar graph, okay? So in summary, this is my summary here. Uh, this bar chart reveals an important or an interesting piece of information. Now don't say interesting or important because that's subjective. We don't want to give opinion. But we can say, in summary, this bar graph reveals that in the given period, um, there are a greater or an increasing uh, percentage of divorcees in um, Denmark and a decreasing proportion of couples separating in Norway um, with the exception of 2011, right? So that's kind of that main trend that we talked about where you can see that uh, here we have more or less an increasing trend there and more or less a decreasing trend there with this exception here, okay? Yeah, Jainil, very good, you caught the same. So Jainil says there's a downward trend. I actually think, Jainil, that's even simpler, more elegant way to state it. So there's a downward trend of divorce in uh, Norway and an upward trend of divorce in Denmark uh, for this time period. And that would be uh, the summary there, absolutely. Okay. All right, students, so whenever you're finished writing, you definitely want to review, uh, even on the IELTS, you want to save a minute for review. I learned that the hard way. So uh, here we go. Um, let's review this uh, together, all right? This bar chart compares the rate of divorce in two European countries, Denmark and Norway, ranging from 0 to 60% between the years 2011 to 2015. At first glance, the divorce rates in both countries fluctuate between 30 and 50% over the course of this half decade. In addition, marriage annulment rates were higher in Norway than Denmark for the first four years, but the inverse is true for 2015. With further analysis, in 2011, divorce rates in Denmark are just over a third of marriages, while Norway is roughly 5% more. In 2015, Norway's rate of divorcement is the greatest of any given year, reaching nearly one in every two couples. Simultaneously, divorce rates in Denmark decrease, creating the largest gap around 15% between the two countries. Nevertheless, over the course of the consecutive two years, 2013 and 2014, Percentages of divorce in Denmark increase, while in Norway they decrease, making the gap smaller. Finally, by 2015, 
divorce rates in Denmark surpass those of Norway by 4%, at which time roughly 38% of couples separate in Norway and about 42% of couples file for divorce in Denmark. In summary, this bar graph reveals that in the given period, there are an increasing uh, percentage of divorcees in Denmark and a decreasing proportion of couples separating in Norway, with the exception of 2011. Okay, um, and I think word is saying just say except for 2011. Okay, to simplify it. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm quite confident that will get me a nice high band score, hopefully a band nine, and then I can go on to part two. Uh, students, that's how it's done for a bar graph, and I did see a lot of good writing um, in the uh, chat as well. That's all the time I had for corrections and feedback, so keep writing. And again, students, members especially, remember that you can send uh, your essay to adrian at aehelp.com for a free band score estimate and if you want detailed editing and feedback on your whole essay you can do that on the website okay uh, remember all of our viewers visit our website aehelp.com for academic IELTS gieltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS and when you are on the website, uh, make sure to click the Join Now button, uh, use the coupon code, and enter the code BETTERNOUNS25 to get that 25% discount off of the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, and because I'm in Canada, it's a bit more expensive if you're in countries like India for example it's definitely a lot cheaper even so uh, check it out we use geo pricing to make our course available for many people so if you're in a country with a lower GDP the courses cost even less okay all right students uh, so that's it for uh, this class but in about uh, 30 minutes I will be back with speaking part one we will look at speaking part one questions we will practice those questions I will call some students so I'm excited about that um, again uh, make sure to use the code better nouns uh, 20 five when you are registering uh, for the premium package to save that 25 percent okay students i'm out for now but i'll be back in half an hour thank you carolina for moderating the chat thank you members for your support hopefully i will see all of our viewers back here in 30 minutes bye for now <laughs>